When I was a child, I was extremely afraid of the dark. I would go sleep on the floor of my parents' room, or sometimes my sister's, when the fear became too much for me. I think most kids are afraid of the dark to some extent. But I had experiences that caused the fear. I'd like to share one of the strangest experiences. My parents were divorced, so I only saw my dad every other weekend. My sister and I would usually go to his house together, and when I'd get scared, I'd go sleep on her floor. One particular weekend, I went by myself. There was something about that house that creeped me out, especially at night. It was bedtime, and I was laying in my bed trying to ignore all the little creaks and noises of an old house, and what sounded like footsteps. When the fear finally got to be too much, I had to go sleep on my dad's floor. I went to his bedroom door only to discover it was locked. I was so scared that I had to get in there no matter what. He had a door that could be unlocked with a penny, so I went back to my room to retrieve a coin so I could break in and sleep safely on his floor. I went across the hall to his door and went to unlock it when the handle started to turn slowly to the right and then to the left. I checked the handle again to find it was now unlocked. I thought maybe it was my dad, but when I opened the door, he was in bed sound asleep. He wouldn't have even had time to get from the door back to his bed that quickly. I ran back to my room and grabbed my pillow and blankets, and just as I left my room, the door behind me slammed shut. I was terrified at this point. The slamming door woke my dad up, and I tried explaining what just happened. But he was irritated and didn't want to hear it. He told me to just lay down on his floor and go to sleep. So that's what I did. The next morning, I discovered that my bedroom door was locked from the inside. So not only did the door slam shut by itself, but it was also locked. Looking back on it, this experience, as terrifying as it was, seems benevolent. I was scared and wanted somewhere safe to go and the door to the safe place was unlocked for me, while the place I was terrified to be was closed off and locked. I'm someone who is always strongly skeptical of the paranormal. If friends tell me they have paranormal experiences in their house, I usually ask them if they have a carbon monoxide detector However, there are a few experiences that I simply cannot explain, no matter what. I was sober for all of these experiences and had no symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. The weirdest one for me was a week where reality seemed to bend. Everything happened while I was driving. One night, I was driving to a coffee shop alone I had never been to before to attend a meeting. Following Google Maps, I pulled up to a three-way intersection that Google said was a four-way. It told me to go straight, but straight ahead there was a chain-link fence with a field behind it. There was a house with a large, very unique-looking tree right next to the fence. I chalked it up to Google Maps making a mistake and turned so I could be rerouted. Right before I got to the coffee shop, someone walked out into the intersection in front of me on a green light and I had to slam on my brakes to avoid hitting them. I honked my horn. The person didn't seem to acknowledge me at all, just kept looking straight ahead. It was a very busy street, and so after I got through the intersection, I looked back and cars were barreling through the intersection, where the person should have been. The person was nowhere to be found. It was like I was the only person who saw them. I could still pick that person out of a lineup, five years later because it freaked me out so much. After the meeting, I used Google Maps to get me back on the highway and it took me by the house with the tree again. The problem was, what had been a field with a chain link fence was now a road, just like Google Maps had said, but the house with the tree was still there. So on top of it being the same intersection, something like 400W300S, it had a landmark 
which made it unmistakably the same place. The next day, I was driving and saw a car turn into another car in front of me. One car was on the road and the other turned onto it from a parking lot. The fronts of their cars were on the same place at the same time. It should have been an accident. I slowed my car down in anticipation, but the car that just got turned into didn't even put on their brake lights. We all pulled up to a red light and I had gotten into the left lane so I could pull up and see if either car had visible damage. There was none. The last part of this episode that made me question my sanity isn't explicitly paranormal, but because either happened the same week, it made me remember it. I saw a car going about 60 in a 30 zone towards the freeway by my house. I watched it go behind me and turn on the off ramp off the freeway and drive straight into op opposing traffic. The traffic didn't react at all. No horns, flashing lights, nothing. At least that I could see. The other three I had were all as a kid. The first, which I don't remember, was that I was sitting in the back seat of my mom's car, babbling, laughing, and talking to someone. My mom asked me who I was talking to, and I said, Grandma. She said, Grandma is in a city about five hours away. And I said, no, angel grandma with brown hair. My grandma with brown hair died before I was born, and no one had told me she existed. Granted, I was too young to remember, and I was coming from my grandpa's, my dead grandma's widower house, so he could have said something, but he swears he didn't. The next, also too young to remember, was on a trip to Virginia. I was in the car and we drove by a church with a large steeple. I said, that's where all the sick people go. My mum said, no, that's a church, honey. And I said, no, there's a sick people in there. My mum, out of curiosity, goes into this church and asks if this was ever a hospital. It turns out it had been made into a confederate hospital during the Civil War. The last happened when I was about 12 years old. Me, my mom and my dog were all sitting in the living room, which lets us see into the kitchen. There was a small plate on the stove, about six inches from the edge, placed perfectly on top of the burner. I know because I put it there. All of a sudden, the plate flies across the room of about five feet. I saw the whole thing. The plate didn't fall, then skip. It came downwards at a diagonal angle, like it had been swatted. My dog, who was very mild-mannered and sweet, immediately starts aggressively barking. My mom and I just look at each other, and I say, did you see that? She just pauses for a minute and says, yeah. I spent about 10 minutes examining the stove in the kitchen but I couldn't find anything that could have caused it. The house did have a few mice, but it seems very unlikely that a mouse could have pushed a plate with this kind of force. Does anyone else have any kind of explanation for any of the experiences that happened to me? My father works on the night shift. So it's just me and my dog from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. Three days ago, my father asked me if I had gotten into his room, to which I replied no, because unless I'm cleaning around, I never get in and the door stays shut. He then asked me to walk in and show me an incense box he has on the top of his shelf, and told me that he found that on floor two consecutive days. It felt odd because the door is always closed and it obviously wasn't me, nor my dog. The next day, it wasn't the incense box. It was a rosary that he was hanging off a religious painting. It appeared across the room and today, it was a small bottle, an envelope and a small cross made with dry leaves that my dad keeps inside a flower base. He thinks it could be me, unconsciously projecting some energy as I've been feeling really anxious lately, though my anxiety has been going for years. Or our late neighbour who passed away a month ago. The thing is, this is only happening in his room, so I do think it could be something trying to communicate with him. And the first person he thought of is our neighbour. 
It doesn't seem to be anything bad or aggressive, though I did hear some noise around our house a couple nights ago. I stay up until 6am because it's summer. Any suggestions on what to do? A friend of mine suggested using some salt in the room to cleanse it, but I honestly don't know. If someone needs help, I don't mind helping, but I don't want something bad to stick with us or me. I've had experiences in the past with noises, hearing someone call my name, hearing knocking inside my room, hearing doors close, but this time, it feels different. I'm 16 and live in a fairly ordinary, albeit reasonably affluent home in a fairly ordinary place. However, my family has a fair history of paranormal encounters. From my old home, which we used as a rental for tenants, where we had every single one of them complain and ask if the house is haunted, as they all saw a blonde woman with disheveled clothes walking around the kitchen. My family also has a thing for antiques. In our current home, we have about four ancient African head sculptures, along with Roman glasses that date before the time of Jesus Christ and so on. In my current house, strange things have happened for a very long time. However, they are far too many in number, and so therefore some have been forgotten and I also can't recount all of them. However, recently in particular, all in a similar time frame, very bizarre stuff has happened. This might be somewhat weird to explain. You know on the door, the slots where you slot the key in to lock it? The silver sort of thing surrounding the hole where the door is closed? Well, I assume most doors have it. The silver thing has randomly been bent at least 90 degrees backwards in the kitchen when entering it. Three times. Now, even though it makes no sense of my brother or dad to do this, and trust me, neither of them would play this sort of prank, and all of us showed visible concern. However, when we tried to bend it ourselves, we literally didn't have the strength to do it, and it took us a long time to get it back into place. The third time it happened, it was bent at a 45 degree angle. Really weird shit. Along with the unsolvable door case, four distinct things happened yesterday. Firstly, in the morning, I went into the kitchen and grabbed some vitamin B's from a container. The tablets were jumbled between big ones and small ones, and so I poured some out, then separated two big ones and tried to put the small ones back. When doing this, a few of them fell on the floor. After I picked them up and stood up to get the big ones, they disappeared, nowhere to be seen. The second thing was my phone randomly disappearing and then being in a weird spot. The third is when I was sitting at the dinner table. I felt a screw underneath me. We assumed that it might have come from the table above the chair. However, upon examining it underneath, all screws were in place. The final weird event of yesterday was one of the weirdest. When it was around 12, I picked up my dog and put him in his cage. I say cage, but it's fairly big and takes up a large part of the kitchen. And upon doing so, locked the door. When I came back to the kitchen about 10 minutes later, the door was unlocked. However, my dog was laying down almost in a scared manner. A submissive manner is accurate. Two things, this lock is fairly sophisticated. It's impossible for my dog to open it. And secondly, my memory is sharp and I'm known for being fairly organized. Not to mention locking the cage after putting the dog in it is impulsive, automatic. You don't forget it. And thirdly, I know nobody went down there and played a trick on me as my brother and dad, at the time the only people home, were upstairs watching a movie with me after I joined them upstairs. So, my friend and I work together cleaning houses and businesses. We clean a large-ish city hall twice a week and something odd happened on Wednesday. 
I was mopping the big front entry hall and saw my friend quickly walk out of a little side hall on the end and into a room. I didn't think much of it at first and kept mopping. Not even a minute later, I looked down another hallway, which isn't connected to that other hall at all, and saw her looking for something on the supply cart to clean the little bathrooms. Cue utter confusion. At first I thought that maybe someone else was in the building, but realised no, that was definitely my friend that I had just seen. I kind of slowly walked toward the room and found it to be empty. I shut off the light and closed the door. I didn't tell my friend about it and chalked it up to my eyes playing tricks on me. Today, we went back to clean and I ended up telling her about it. Her eyes got wide and she told me that she had seen something very similar on that same day. She said she was coming out of the janitor's closet and saw me turning the corner at one end of the hall, going into the large main hallway. She called out for me to tell me something, but I didn't turn around or acknowledge her. She ran toward the main hall and I was gone. At that moment, she heard me opening a door behind her at the opposite end of the hall, saying something about the plants. I even remember this. I'd been back in the officers dusting and noticed the dead leaves on their plants looked glittery and wanted to tell her about it. When I found her, she was at the end of that hall looking around. I remember she looked kind of confused, but she didn't mention it either. There's a lot of hallways. I hope that wasn't confusing. The point being, there was no way either of us could have been where we thought we saw each other. Weird things. For some background before I get started, me and my parents moved into a house back in 2008. Unknown to me at the time, as an 8 to 10 year old, a girl had drowned our bathtub months prior to us moving in. She took muscle relaxers and slipped under. This took place several years ago, when I was 11 to 13 years old, I'm 22 now. I was a child that struggled with severe insomnia and was on some really strong sleeping pills because without them, I couldn't get a wink. I always kept my pill bottle in the bathroom so I could take them before bed. It was a normal day. I'd been playing outside most of the day, getting into who knows what and just being a kid. It was time to come inside as it was getting late and my parents wanted to make sure I ate and drank something. I had problems eating and drinking. Fast forward after dinner, it was time to take my medicine, so I would be tired as heck for bed. I go to the bathroom and my pill bottle is gone. I thought it fell on the floor, but it was nowhere to be found. Me and my parents tore the house apart looking for my medicine bottle, but to no avail. It was hard, sleepless nights after that. Fast forward about three months, me and my dad were replacing electrical wiring in the attic and I was the only one small enough to get into the far corner to slide a wire down into the ceiling to my dad. I looked around at the insulation and saw something white and covered in dust. My curiosity peaked and I crawled over to the wood boards and I quickly realised it was my medicine bottle that had gone missing months prior. My parents were grasping at straws and baffled at how it ended up in the attic. But at this point, I'd overcome my insomnia and no longer needed the pills. This was only the beginning of things I would experience over the years, living in a haunted house. I worked for a haunt walk tour in Upper Michigan. Most of the time, we didn't experience anything on the tours, and we had to hype not exactly true stories that would happen on the tour. What I'm about to scroll out for you is true, and it scared the hell out of me. I befriended one of the tour guides, and we often went on little ghost hunts because we were bored. We used all the fun tech on our ventures. Friends from Illinois were visiting, and I knew one of them was into the paranormal. 
I ask the tour guide to take us on a private tour. We hit up most of the local hotspots, and when we were passing the cemetery, I told them about the tombstone of a friend that I frequently visited, just to unload my worldly burdens onto. The tour guide asked if he wanted to see if he would talk back. We settled near the stone and were using a hack shack, or shack hack, can't remember what it's called, to communicate. We finally heard my name. The tour guide was constantly scanning the area for temperature drops. About 20 feet away was a drop of temperature. The spot was 40. It was the middle of summer. I was instructed to take the ghost box and stand in the area. As I did, the voice became clearer. After about five minutes, I felt a cold step on my foot, and then it turned into a normal 75 degree night. After that night, I was tortured by terrible nightmares that would happen on a two week basis. I can't tell you what they were about because it happened when I was a teen, but I do remember they didn't stop until I went back to the graveyard. My friend informed me that what I was speaking to was not the spirit of a dearly departed, but that of one of three demonic presences of the area. He explained to me that ghosts don't typically haunt graveyards. The next couple weeks were rough. My mental health had declined. I was fighting with my parents. My friends had distracted themselves from me and my significant other and I broke up. The tour guide friend and I would go to the outskirts of the graveyard with his lover. Note, I didn't know they were sleeping together at this time and all the equipment. We made it a point not to enter the graveyard again. We were 30 minutes in until the lover suggested he had heard the location of the tour guide's apartment. Just like my other friends, they had abandoned me. The next years, I moved around a lot, affecting my mental and physical health. When I went back to the graveyard next, I was to bury my father in 2017. Afterwards, I had this feeling of warmth and as if a great weight was off my shoulders. I remain friends with the tour guide and we talk every now and then. I'm doing a lot better. I've got a great job and a fantastic fiance. I'm healthy and have surrounded myself with people who love and support me. I don't often talk about when weird stuff happens around me. I find when I do, the frequency of the occurrences increases and that is not fun. But this latest event was unnerving and I just need to get it off my chest. My house is one of those old hoses in Chicago, built in the 1880s for workers, probably the meat packing industry. It's so old, the pillars supporting the house are literally tree trunks. Everything creaks. The wood floors are so noisy that they wake up the baby if one of us walks by her bedroom. It's a bit run down, but it's generally a warm and happy home. We've lived here almost four years. That being said, there are still occasionally loud, terrifying thumping noises with no explanation and random uncomfortable feelings or events. Two mornings ago was the worst event I've experienced. It was one of my days off and my wife had taken the baby out for a walk with her friend. That meant I could go back to bed, play games on my phone and take a little nap. As I was finally ready to drift off, one of the baby's electronic toys went off in the living room. It was one of those tiny tables that has a bunch of buttons and things to press, then plays little sounds and songs. It has maybe 20 buttons. So it goes off and I try to ignore it, telling myself that one of the cats bumped it. I know they didn't because they are noisy little chunks but I like to pretend these things anyway. A minute later, the damn table makes a different noise. Different noise, different button. I continue to ignore it and try to fall asleep, but sleep quickly becomes impossible. The sound keeps coming at a random intervals, as if trying to get me to respond. But I'm good at this game and pretend like I don't even hear it. After maybe 15 minutes, it seems like things have calmed down. My nap though is not going to happen. The thing got to me. At that point, I was freaked out enough that I let my mask slip 
and pull the sheets over my head like I was seven years old again. Immediately, and I mean the moment after I had the sheets over my head, the table starts up again. Only this time, it's not just a button being pressed. The button was being held down, the sounds repeating over and over again. I bunker down and ignore it, figuring I could wait this out like I did the others. Those times it stopped fairly quickly. Not this time. It goes on for more than a minute. I debate trying to wait it out, but I don't want my family to come home and find me cowering under a sheet while our daughter's toy mocks me from another room. Not because I care about them seeming brave. My wife knows who I am. I just don't want whatever it was able to feed off their reactions as well as mine. So I get up, calmly walk to the living room, turn the toy off and return to my bed to cower under my blankets until my wife comes home to rescue me. I'm just glad the thing hasn't turned itself back on. In high school, I worked at a family fun park, go-karts, batting cages, laser tag. One day at work, I was working outside on the go-kart track. One of my co-workers came outside and asked if I had seen this creepy little girl that looks straight out of a horror movie. They said she had very pale skin, long black hair, and was wearing a white dress. My co-worker was joking about how scary and unsettling she looks. The park really isn't that big, and I didn't see anyone like that. Creepy little girls are actually one of my biggest fears, so I'm telling her to quit with this story, and she's insisting that it's true. Another one of my co-workers comes out now, talking about the girl too. Those two female co-workers were best friends and would mess with other employees a lot, so I wrote it off as one of their stupid jokes. Fast forward about an hour later maybe. Now I'm working inside at the laser tag. This boy, maybe about 10 years old, comes out of the laser tag crying. He runs to his dad and starts talking to him. His dad comes over and he says his son was attacked in the laser tag area by a girl. The story he said was that a girl screamed at him, then charged him and started scratching him. I noticed then that the little boy is bleeding. He has a look that is a combination of pure horror and a thousand yard stare. His dad also seems to be very concerned as well. His son was very frightened. I asked him what the person looked like. He said a girl with long black hair and a white dress. I sent the two of them up front to get a band-aid. I was the only one working the laser tag so I couldn't go in there or else I would leave the entrance unattended and my boss would not be happy about that. There were still a few people inside playing laser tag. Two minutes later, they come out. I asked them if they saw the girl and they all said no. I closed the entrance of the laser tag, blocked it with a rope and went inside. I literally am clearing this laser tag area like a SWAT team. Every corner I take is fast and I'm ready to punch the fuck out of anyone trying to jump at me. I spend a few minutes inside. There's nobody there. Either she left out of the fire escape, it doesn't set off an alarm, or she left out of the front when I was clearing the laser tag and our paths didn't cross on her way out. The rest of the day passes without incident. I tell my co-workers about the girl. The two girls from before are chiding me because I doubted them earlier. I'm back outside at the go-karts. Right before my shift is up, I see her. She's standing outside the fence in the parking lot. White dress, black hair, very pale skin. Like the girl from the ring except not a corpse. She's in a parking lot, smiling, crying. Smiling, crying. Repeated back and forth, crying followed by a sadistic like smile. Eventually, she walks off into the distance. I don't know where she went. I know she didn't have any parents or anyone with her when she left. What do you think was going on? An elaborate prank? I don't think the boy and his dad were faking. He definitely got scratched hard. Some sort of mentally sick, unsupervised child? Some sort of weird ass demon child? 
It's still something I think of every so often. When I was younger, my favorite cousin and I used to frequently have sleepovers. I used to be a huge scary cat, always on edge and easily frightened. So whenever we had the sleepovers, we would sleep together in one bed. My cousin's bed faced her bedroom door that was always left open at night. All you could see at night was the empty dark kitchen, which I hated, meaning I would sleep on the side of the bed, facing the wall instead. My cousin and I would joke around and laugh until we grew tired and fell asleep watching something on TV. I've always been an early bird. I'd be up by 6 a.m. and force my cousin to wake up at that time. But for some odd reason, this time I had decided to let her sleep for a little while more. I have no idea why, but I decided to turn around and stare out into the empty quiet kitchen while debating how I was going to crawl over my cousin to get up to use the bathroom. And suddenly, I saw a big, long, shadowy figure walk past the doorway of the room. I froze in horror. I felt my body immediately shut down in fear, but it was very early and it was still a bit dark, so I tried to dismiss it as me seeing things. Until recently, when I was telling my cousin this story, and she's told me that she was also awake at that time and had also seen the long, dark, shadowy figure pass the doorway. I don't know whether to feel relieved that I wasn't the only one seeing things or scared that she saw it as well. When I was younger, my dad's side of the family, almost every year, would all go on vacation to Mexico to the small ranch they grew up in. It's fun for my cousins and me since we would all spend time together and play all day until the sun started to go down in fear of seeing La Llorona, the wailing, weeping woman. In case you aren't aware, there is a Mexican urban legend that late at night near bodies of water, a wailing woman crying, where are my children? will appear looking for the children she drowned. And if she sees a child, she'll take them or drown them. My grandmother's house, which we usually stayed at, was at the edge of the ranch. So after my grandma's house, there was just a huge space and a road that would take you to the next neighboring ranch, which was roughly half an hour car ride. It was very rare to see a person walking unless they were on a horse, if it wasn't a car. So at night, it would get pitch black unless the moon was out. Almost right next to her house, a stream passed right next to her house, which then dropped into a small waterfall. We would play there all day until the sun was going down. We would dash out there, not wanting to get dragged by La Luana. One night, for some reason, my cousins and I got bold and decided that we wanted to see La Luana and finally conclude whether or not she was real. We all gathered at the front of my grandmother's house and marched our way to the stream. The first few minutes, we stood right next to the stream, calling for her, and would remain quiet and scared, not wanting to miss if she cried out. But after a while of waiting, we got tired and started joking and cracking jokes about La Llorona. Suddenly, we all heard a loud wail making us stay completely quiet in fear. My cousins and I screamed and ran back into my grandma's house, where to our horror, we found all of our parents inside having coffee. We were all hoping it was maybe one of our parents playing a trick on us, but they were all inside chatting. We never mentioned it to our parents at that point, because we would all get in trouble for being near the stream at night. But my cousins and I still don't know who or what made that sound that night. I still get chills remembering how horrifying that whale was. I had an experience when I was 10. I was cleaning my room when one of the action figures on my shelf fell over. It wasn't a natural fall either, but I thought it was probably my elbow. The same day, 
I had a friend over and I was telling them about the figure falling over. Not that we weren't near the shelf at the time of our conversation. I explained to them how I thought, what if it was a ghost? And everything, and as soon as I said it fell over, the figure fell over in the same unnatural way. We both ran out of the room, understandably. And later that day, they told me that they thought it was making it up until it fell over. The second experience was when I felt a figure sitting on a chair. I remember them wearing early 20th century clothes. I thought it was my imagination and thought the same thing. It must be my imagination. He's not real, yada yada. Right after, I thought that I, it like was first punched the shutters. The window was closed. Even if it was the wind, the entire shutter would fold. But it was only one side of the shutter that got hit and was shaking. I'm not the type of person who has dreams or lucid dreams. However, maybe a week and a half or two into August, I was sleeping. Not sure if I had dreamt. If I did, it was very short dreams. But anyways, a huge loud voice woke me up out of my sleep. I recognized the voice too. It was my mom's voice. She called me two times, but the voice was so loud. I woke up frightened and thought she was at my door room. I woke up and my mom wasn't there or any of the family members. So I laid in my bed thinking like, what the fuck? So I replayed the voice over in my head, trying to understand it or what it meant. Because the voice I heard while sleeping sounded sad, hurt and scared. So I went downstairs to speak to my mom about her coming upstairs to my room calling me, which the answer was no. So I kept thinking, did that voice mean anything or only a dream? So I got a huge bad feeling. Something told me someone in the family was going to die. I don't know who or when, but something fucking told me. I kept that to myself. Now the most shocking and most unreal feeling happened to me. The following week of August of 2021, which happened a few days ago, I lost the mother of my child in a very bad car accident. The worst news I ever got in my life. When I got the news, how could you not? I was in my room and my mom ran to my door, banging on it and was calling my name the same way when I was sleeping. She broke down in tears saying she died, she died. I was so shocked and lost that my body filled up with goosebumps with a weak feeling because the first thing that came to mind was my dream when I woke up from hearing that voice sounding like my mom. All I know is that life is weird to the point I don't understand how it is. I lost the mother to my child and my daughter will not have a mother to grow up with. Shit hurts so much. I just can't expect it and fully, I'm fully denying it. So angry at hurt by it. I feel so sorry for my daughter as well. The best thing I can do is try my best to give her a better life and step up even harder to be a better father. Please spend time with your loved ones and make sure you know that blissful love because life works in mysterious ways and we shouldn't wait until death to show love. Background. Me, my older sister, father and family dog moved to a house when I was 10 and my sister 14. The moving day was the first time I stepped into the house and immediately I felt uncomfortable. Weird things started to happen almost immediately. Night after night, a man would visit my room and each night he got closer. Our rooms were all along the hallway and my door was always the only one open in case of fire or something. This went on for months. Then one night, the man sat next to me on my bed. I was facing a wall and could hear my dad snoring from the end of the hallway bedroom. The man crouched next to my ear. I felt his breathing and suddenly, he just whispered my name. I jumped up, burst out crying and ran to my sister's room. 
She woke up and asked what happened. While crying, I told her about the man who visited me every night and how he finally said my name. I was scared shitless. I slept in her room that night. There was a time when I lived with my mom, but when I moved back with my dad when I was around 15, just the two of us lived there. Sister moved to her own place. During the few years I lived there again, I found out by Ouija board and interacting with them that with us lived the man, an old lady and a little boy. I talked with the man almost daily and asked him why he was scaring me when I was little. He told me that he was just checking if I was all right and that when he lived, he had two daughters around the same age my sister and I were. He just wanted to make sure I was all right and unharmed. He also told me he was scared of my dad and wanted to protect me from him. The man also kept the old lady in her place and prevented her from tormenting us. We lived together with my dad and the ghosts for a few years. Then I moved back with my mom for a year. Now, I live in my own place, a few short streets from my father's house where he lives alone with the ghosts. Weird things have happened a few times in my apartment, such as someone turning my shower on for a few seconds and then turning it off and turning lights on and off, things going missing and reappearing. Could it be possible that the man who swore to protect me comes to visit me every now and then? Weird things happen only if I haven't visited my dad in a long period of time, like a few weeks to a month or two. But if I miss visit my dad every now and then, then nothing happens. P.S. My sister said that someone kept visiting my room after I moved out the first time. That's when she started to believe me. Someone also stood at her doorway, but never went into the room. Our family dog always went crazy when that happened. And my father, after years, told me that he knew the place was haunted and knew what I told him was true. But he didn't want to scare a 10-year-old me.